Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. If you would take your seats, we can be begin this wonderful evening. Thank you all for being here on this very special night in this very special place. Uh, I can't thank you all enough for the support that you give to Wagner College, to our students and faculty, to our staff, to our whole campus community. It makes such a huge difference in the life of this campus. Your support personally for me as the president of the college is just, uh, in, leaves an indelible mark on me and inspires me to work that much harder every time I come to the office. So thank you all for being here. We have a fabulous night planned with wonderful musical entertainment. Of course, we're honoring very specific folks. And of course, the entire evening is really a tribute to our Board of Trustees, particularly for the 14 years that I've been president, who have been just sterling in support of the college and all the stakeholders and members of our community. I can't thank them enough. We should give them a round of applause to start off with. So we're going to begin with a toast, and I want to thank th you, Richard. And then Warren will say a few words, uh, and then we'll go into the program in a second. So this toast is to Wagner College for its incredible, excellent past, its wonderful, magnificent present, and its fabulous future. To Wagner College. Mm. Warren, you want to say? Yeah, I'll say a few words. Uh, thank you very much, Richard. I would certainly echo your sentiments. Uh, I grew up five minutes away from here, so Wagner College has been part of my life almost all my life. My dad was an alum, class of 36. Uh, I knew I would come here even when I was a kid. Uh, at Walt Hamline's function back in June, I made a confession, and that was when I was a kid, I used to climb over, the, we didn't have Hamline Field then, I used to climb over the fence to get into football games, so I cheated the school out of a lot of money over the years. <laughs> And I made a vow I would give back. So that's why I've been involved as chairman of the board. Thank you. To Wagner. Hello to all my beautiful friends. We have really made some wonderful friends over the year. And I look forward to talking to all of you this evening. And here's to you. Thank you for being there for Richard and myself. Here, here. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to yeah. So before we turn to the distinguished Anthony Turner, one of our wonderful music professors who will sing Beautiful Upon the Hill, and he may shatter all the glasses in the room. He's an unbelievable person and a dear friend. Before I do that, I just want to recognize some people in the room, if you would. So we have some current trustees, and if they would just stand to me so we can recognize them. We have John Myers, vice chair of the board. Diane Powers, where's Diane Powers? Diane Powers, our treasurer, the Board of Trustees. You've already met Warren Prochi, our chair of the board. And we have the wonderful Kim Spiro, where's Kim? Kim Spiro and her two wonderful daughters, Mackenzie and Haley. Would you guys stand up as well? <laughs> we have some former board members. I'll just do this alphabetically. We have Don Crooks. Right here, who's head of our now, the head of our business program. Where's Don? Right here. Aletta Kip Diamond. Where's Aletta? Former secretary of the board. John Gloystein. John, please. Jay Hardig, my former chair. Louise Kaufman, former chair of the board. Where's Louise? I lost Louise. Way back there, I can't see her from the flowers. The first woman chair of the Board of Trustees of Wagner College. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mike Nicholas who was, and Margaret were supposed to be here tonight, but Michael did something to his ankle, so he's getting taped up in the emergency room as we speak. He's fine, but he, I would recognize him as well as a former member of our Board of Trustees. We have Al Palladino, where's Al? Did Al sneak in here somewhere along the way? Not here yet, okay. And Fred Williamson. We have members of the senior administration. I'd like them to be recognized as well. We have our provost, Dr. Lily McNair. <laughs> senior Vice President, Angela Remo. <laughs> Chief Financial uh, Officer and Vice President for uh, Business and Administration, John Koresha. Where's John? 
any, any issues tonight with the food or the service, 1-800-Koresha, right there. At that Do not come to my table. Go right to that table over there. Joe Romano, my Vice President for Administration. Where's Joe? And Rudy Shaw Gordon, Vice President for International, Intercultural, and Campus Life. We have some other people who are parts of the affinity groups that really sustain this college. Just in alphabetical order, we have uh, Dr. Victor and Kim Avis from the High Society. We have Liz Cardiello, alumni board member. Where's Liz? We have the Honorable Dr. Ralph Lamberti, former bar president and head of the Da Vinci Society. And the Da Vinci Society, under Ralph's leadership, has raised over a million dollars in scholarships in the last number of years, so fantastic. We have Eleanor Conforti from the Da Vinci Society. Where's Eleanor? I should also mention Susan Lamberti is here. She's a dear, dear friend as well. We have Marilyn Desario and Eva Lazar Gabriel from the Guild, from the Executive Committee of the, of the Wagner Guild. And I'd just like to recognize a few other people who've been very instrumental in putting this evening together. Karen Garassi, Patrick Minson, and Betty McComiskey. Where are they? Would they all stand? We want to thank the Chartwells team. We have Robert Saltman and Chef Michael Purpura. Are they probably running around here somewhere? They're in the back. We have Marcia Sadaloff and her wonderful husband is here, responsible for all the design and decorations. Marcia, where are you? Please stand up. She's way in the back. And then last, uh, last we, thank you. And lastly, we have some of our musical performers who I want to recognize in advance. And but we'll be introducing them as we go through the evening with their performances. But we have Dr. Laura Young, our director of musical performance and member of the faculty of our theater department. Anthony Turner, who you'll hear in just a second. Jenny Kelly from the class of, of 2013. Eric Elson from the class of 2018. Matthew Healy from the class of 2018. Stephen Callis from the class of 17. Dana Kluzik from the class of 19. Where's Dana? Okay. The reason I'm having Dana stand up. Dana, you're 18? Are you 18? Are you 18 years old? She was born in 1998. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. And Dan Marconi. Daniel Marconi. Great. So let me introduce uh, Anthony Turner, who's a distinguished member of our music faculty, who's just an outstanding person. Uh, and not only is a performer, but brings so much historical context to everything he does in terms of laying out the foundations and critical analysis that surrounds any musical performance that he does. So Anthony's going to do the our wonderful alma mater. And then Reverend Terry Troya, our dear, dear friend, honorary degree holder from Wagner, will do the invocation. Anthony. We begin the, uh, the wonderful celebration of our honorees with this first introduction of really Dr. Robert O'Brien, who couldn't be here tonight. When we announced the date of this event, he told me, and he is at a wedding in Chicago for a nephew for whom he was a important figure in his life. And he says, no way I can do it. But he, Angela and I had lunch with him just recently. He's so proud of Wagner, so committed to Wagner. And I just wanted to say, when I first became president, Bob was determined that I be successful. Absolutely determined. And so he became a mentor. I had to meet with him every two weeks in his office. And you know, Bob is half Irish, half German. I would always seem to get the German side until I proved that I could actually be a successful president. Then I got the Irish side. So, so we have this wonderful recognition for Bob O'Brien and really the board that he led, which was so, so important to the success of the college and the transition all the way through those first couple of years. So this is for Bob O'Brien. Let's recognize him. This next one is for 
Jay Hardig. Jay, why don't you come, over, come forward, please? Jay Hardig was the second chair that I served with, and he was fabulous. He brought the board together. If you know Jay, his incredible career, it, it was uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers, and really a very distinguished person in his field of accounting, uh, but a fabulous board member. And the one thing that he drilled into me was be strategic, be strategic, be strategic, be strategic. And he was fabulous to me. He uh, really guided me in so many different ways, uh, and I can't thank him enough. And again, he led a great board in that early phase of that first campaign. It was so fabulous. So Jay, this is on behalf of Wagner College, this is to you to recognize the great leadership which you've given to us. I promise to limit my remarks to an hour to an hour and a half. <laughs> and, uh, I said before I came up here, uh, my role up here tonight is sort of be like the body at an Irish wake. And that is, without you, there's no party, but not much is expected from you. <laughs> uh, Bob O'Brien, who Richard just uh, mentioned, uh, was the guy during my life. I was chairman three times. And um, one time, Fred Williamson called me and twisted my arm up so far behind my back it was up to my hairline in the back. <laughs> the, time, uh, the other time was with Bob O'Brien. And Bob uh, schooled me well, talked me into this, and he, apparently he had been softened by the time he spoke to me. And he said, you only have to get Richard on the phone once a week. You, you didn't have to come to the office, but you had to be on the phone once a week. And that's what we did for a number of years, and uh, we, had a, we had great success. I'd like to point out to everybody who perhaps hasn't seen it, the New York Times ran an article this, uh, this week and Richard sent it around, the staff sent it around to the, uh, the community, uh, pointing out that Wagner <coughs> is a school that represents one of the best value-added schools in the country. And uh, it, it, <laughs> there, there are a lot of people trying to measure success, among them the federal government, uh, that hasn't been very successful at doing that in almost anything they've measured. Uh, <coughs> But uh, it, it brought to mind, and, and there's actually a quote in the article, and it made me think that, uh, you know, when, when kids are picking out a school, it's not where you went, it's who you will be. And that's what Wagner did for me, that's what Wagner did for most of the graduates in this room, and I'm glad to have been associated with the school. So thank you. I want to recognize Jay's family who had to put up with him being out of town and away on all these stuff. Would they please stand up, please? I want this table in the front. Marianne, please, have them all stand up. <laughs> so our next honoree is Dr. Louise Kaufman. Louise, please come forward. As I mentioned, Louise was the first ch woman chair of the Board of Trustees. <laughs> and with Louise, each board chair I had had a particular unique quality about them. Louise, it was about accountability. It was about accountability. Okay, Richard, if you can't measure it, we can't count it. We can't, and she really gave me a sense of outcomes and measurement and metrics, in addition to just wonderful you know, leadership on the board. It was a little bit conflicted at times on that board. We have people coming and going a bit. Louise held it together. She was absolutely resolute and resilient uh, and really was on the other half of the campaign. And she was just fantastic. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Thank, you so much. Thank you so much, Richard and Warren. I've been, um, it's really been an honor to be the chair um, here at Wagner and uh, working with Jay and Bob and Don Spiro before me. Um, and with Warren, he was my vice chair. So um, I was really very, very well um, surrounded by really good people and helped me, to, working with Richard, to steer the path for, for Wagner. And um, it, this, this award is, isn't um, for me, it's for all of us here. And I'm so thrilled that you're all here. Trustees, former and present, alums, friends, family, faculty, 
and staff, everyone who's here has made a contribution to this wonderful school. And we have been working together all these years, the 14 years that Richard has been at the helm, it's been his vision and his ability to carry through what his vision is and taking us along with him. And as Jay mentioned, the accolades that Wagner has been achieving, if you look on our website once a month, almost once a month we're getting some kind of recognition in any number of fields. And it's truly um, something that we could all be proud of and something that we need to work toward in the future of sustaining and building for our future. And I just want to mention that I'm very proud that I have a, a cousin who's here at Wagner, and it's, she's here in her third year. Unfortunately, she's not here, but her dad's here and her grandparents. So I'm very proud of them. So, Chris, Judy and Charlie. So, I just wanted to say thank you all, and um, let's continue to work together, all of us, to make sure that Wagner is the best it can be. Thank, thank you. you. This next recognition is for the man standing to my right, who has been chair for four, the fourth, fourth year. year. Uh, as you know, Wagner's, uh, Warren is a graduate. As he mentioned, he grew up around the corner. So with, with Warren, it's been about partnership. We've been doing this together. We're on the phone every Wednesday. Uh, we talk through all the issues. I uh, just feel like, like my, other, my other chair, is just a tremendous sense of support conversation, the vitality he has, the love and affection for the school. We problem solve very carefully together on any issues that are outstanding. And it's just a great source of strength for me to have him. So Warren, on behalf of Wagner College, we recognize you with this wonderful plan, this wonderful tray. Thank you, thank you very much. I'll be, I'll be careful not to give this to Linda. She may use it as a weapon when she gets angry with me. So, but it's very beautiful, thank you. As mentioned, my uh, association with Wagner goes back a long time. Uh, my father was in the class of 36, and I've witnessed the evolution of Wagner College over the years. My father was the, uh, the son of immigrants from southern Italy who were very, very poor, barely spoke English. Uh, Wagner is what gave him the opportunity, gave him the background and the fundamentals to go on to medical school and have a very successful practice here on Staten Island. When I came to Wagner, we were beginning the evolution from a commuter college to a more residence-oriented college. The school was starting to show signs of some real growth and movement at that time. And Wagner gave me an excellent background and enabled me to go off to the uh, University of Wisconsin Medical School. Uh, I snapped at the opportunity when uh, Richard's predecessor, Norman Smith, asked me to be on the board. And I over the years moved from being a board member to the executive committee and then really relished the opportunity to become chair of the board and have the opportunity to see what I think is going to be the next evolution of Wagner College. It's been a pleasure to work with Richard and uh, Louise mentioned vision. Vision is something that Richard has aplenty. Now in my field if you have vision you're in trouble. <laughs> uh, but with Richard the vision is something that's been extraordinarily helpful. I, in, in addition to the, to the football game, by the way, I hope there are people who paid to go to the games, I mean, with Terry's <laughs> admission, too. Uh, I also spent time in the library. There's a, there's a couple of quotes from Shaw, George Bernard Shaw, that I'd like to, to mention. One is, the rational man adapts himself to the world. The irrational man expects the world to adapt itself to him. Therefore, progress is dependent upon r irrational men. Now, I'm not saying Richard's an irrational man, but in working with Richard, and especially in helping him with his vision for the school, including the next step that we'll be taking for the Center for Global Learning, it's been very important to have him continue to believe and continue to be a little bit irrational. Another quote from, uh, from Shaw that I like is, some men see things as they are. Others dream things, some men see things as they are and ask why. Others dream things that never were and ask, why not? Richard is somebody who's been asking why not about the progress of the school. And in addition to partnership, I'd like to think that the, another thing that we share is vision. And here's hoping that 
Richard's vision continues and that the college continues its evolution and has a much brighter future than even our very, very bright present. Thank you. So our next and last honoree from board chair is, of course, the esteemed Don Spiro. If Kim would come forward, you want to bring Mackenzie and Haley with you, Kim? Come on up. I want the granddaughters here as well. I had the privilege recently, along with Walt Hamline and Kim, of spending a very long afternoon with Don. And it was just, uh, just wonderful seeing Don again. And uh, Don represents to me uh, wisdom and commitment. He's never shaken his commitment to Wagner. And his vision, uh, his wisdom is palpable. I talk to him on the phone uh, every couple of weeks just to see, keep him posted on what we're doing. And he has full of good ideas. And his commitment to Wagner is never, never, he's never shrugged really from that responsibility. It's his school. It's Evelyn School, uh, and I'm just so proud of that family. We should all be in, in awe of the family, what they've done. And so, if I can have the tray. We don't have a tray. We have a wonderful bowl for Don. We're taking pictures. I hope Don will get to see them. Uh, and this is really the person who helped return the school around from its darkest days. And Evelyn and Don have been so committed. As you know, we have the Evelyn School of Nursing, which we're so, Evelyn Spiro School of Nursing, which we're so proud of. So, Kim, on behalf of uh, the board and, and the college, this is for your dad, for his chairmanship, and his emeritus, his emeritus Thank you, standing. Thank you. Just a few words. Um, my family has always believed in this school from the past to the future. And he, he just has so many wonderful things in store for Wagner. So here's to Wagner. Thank you. So we have a little special, we're about to go to our second course and then we'll come back and have one of our other honorees, John Myers, and Fred Williamson will introduce John. <clears throat> but before that, I wanted just to do um, a special announcement. Um, and that is, you know, as we are intending on another capital campaign to raise money for our endowment, to repair some of our older buildings, but most importantly, to build a new major academic building, which we're calling the Center for Global Learning on the site of the Augustinian property. And this summer, we had two major gifts to announce. Mike and Margaret Nicholas, $13 million towards this building. Spiro built, the Spiro family, $12 million towards this building. Those two families, along with the Megerly family and a number of other families, are just in they're just such solid supporters of this college, and they understand that what happens here is that you see young people like some of the ones you'll meet tonight, others that you've met on campus, who are just sterling. I, I, I've been in higher education, hard to admit this, 41 years as a professor or as a dean or director of programs or a dean or a provost or a president, and I, I just adore these students. They know that. I tell them this all the time, but I really do. They're just wonderful young people. They have no silver spoon in their mouths. They just want to work hard. They have a high achievement uh, emphasis. They have a great sense of humor, informal personalities, and they just are wonderful. You want these, these youngsters to be the doctors and lawyers and actors and oh, so many nurses and, and every field we can think of, business, entrepreneurs, in every field that we can think of, you want, these are the kind of people who make differences in organizations and communities. So uh, really it's, it's recognition of that, that Mike and Margaret and Don and Evelyn have realized, and so we thank them mightily. Let's give them one more round of applause, and to all our honorees. We'll have our next course, and then proceed a little bit later. Thank you. Good. Enjoy dinner. So our last recognition of the evening is in honor of all those members of the Wagner family who uh, valiantly served the nation 
in armed conflict and in their armed services. Uh, long overdue to recognize this in a more formal way. We have a tremendous history at Wagner that goes right back to World War II, really. Uh, and uh, so many, including Don Spiro and Mike Nicholas, who both were active on active duty in World War II, and many, many others. Um, and tonight, uh, it's my privilege really to introduce uh, Fred Williamson uh, to introduce our recipient. Fred Williamson, a class of 64, I think everybody in this room who knows Fred would say the finest man they've ever met. Absolutely. <laughs> Unselfish, a natural leader, heroic, heroic figure, he hates my saying this, heroic figure in the Vietnam War, uh, and survived in, in, actually, they thought that he had passed on, and he survived uh, a horrible attack in the war and led his men in val valiant way. Uh, been a tremendous trustee at Wagner, leader, quiet as I said, always there, steady as a rock, and just a great friend. Fred, could you please come up? Thank you for that. That's very nice, Richard. I appreciate it. Uh, tonight, we're going to honor our veterans, and as Rich said, there's been a long history. I actually have some notes tonight, Jay, but uh, certainly want to recognize, and I'd ask you if you have served in our armed forces, if you just would stand up for a second. Jay, the rest. <laughs> Thank you for your service. John Myers and I first met in, uh, I think it was 1963, John, and uh, we were both undergrads at Wagner. Um, we're brothers of Alpha Sigma Phi fraternity, but we're also... <laughs> it was easy to get into, John. Uh, but we also share the brotherhood of those that have served, men and women, not only serving today, but have served in the past, and there's a unique bond there. And um, the opportunity to share that with somebody who has done so much for veterans is an absolute privilege. Um, John is someone who I say we, we, we honor who he was, but we're also honoring who he is, and that's really important to me. Um, he's someone who truly understands and uh, lives by the mantra, we take care of our own. He does a, a great deal. I'm not going to try to recount all the things he does, but I am going to share a couple of things with you because I think they're, they're certainly worth mentioning. John graduated from Wagner with a BS in mathematics in 1967 and entered the U.S. Navy Officer Candidate School. Graduated with honors and went on to the Navy Guided Missile School. Back in the day, that was pretty cool. <laughs> the, um, Attended Guided Missile School and graduated and was assigned to the USS Long Beach as a Talos Missile Officer, right out of college and right into the, the fray. He served two tours of duty in Vietnam. And during that time, the Long Beach was the first ship in US naval history to bring down enemy aircraft by, from a shipped to air missile. And that was John's Talos Missile Command. <laughs> John left the Navy with the rank of lieutenant in early 1970 to begin his long career with General Electric. For the next 37 years, John worked in a number of different assignments with GE, both domestically and internationally, both in uh, Germany and Italy. And uh, at the end of his career, he has uh, rose to the, be the president and CEO of GA, GE's asset management. Now, this, this group included the investment arm of GE, uh, which was responsible for managing all the assets of its pension fund, 401k, mutual funds, and the insurance company. What else couldn't you do? And um, at the end of his tour of duty there, if you will, and, and his retirement in 2007, he was managing and directing and responsible for the $200 billion company that he had built in, in Ford GE. A hell of an accomplishment, John. <laughs> 
So, during that time, while he was uh, with GE, those 37 years, he met his lovely wife, Jody, and uh, they married in 1973. They have three children, uh, wonderful children, uh, Jennifer, David, Christina, and Kimberly. The cool thing is that while they were raising those wonderful children, they were making a difference all the way through their lives. Uh, they've given back, not just in dollars, but in sharing their time and talent. And they've been involved in many, many different causes, great organizations. Uh, but I want to function, you know, zoom, zoom in here on a couple of things. Uh, first, I'd share with you that their son, David, was commissioned a Marine officer in 2003. And uh, 2001, excuse me, and served two tours of duty in Iraq. So he had two tours in harm's way, just like his dad did. The first tour in 2003, as I said, and the second was in 2014. During his second tour, unfortunately, David was uh, wounded in the Battle of Fallujah, was awarded the Purple Heart, and received the Navy Marine Corps Commendation Medal for his actions. <laughs> now, what I think is really, really cool is that while David was involved in his first tour, John got involved with the Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation. Uh, one that's, that's a foundation that's near and dear to my heart and I spend a good bit of time there also. Um, but they, we, our group, provides educational scholarships to those children of those who give the ultimate sacrifice while serving our country in the military or in any line of uh, law enforcement as long as it's in the line of duty. Today, Father and son, David and John, are working together. David's on the board of directors of the Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation, and John continues his long and very active involvement. We thank you for that, John. <laughs> let, me, let me just share two other items with you, because I think that they mean a lot. In, in 2010, John was one of the founding directors of American Corporate Partners. This is a nonprofit organization that has received the cooperation of 50 plus of the Fortune 500 companies, where these companies give by volunteering their employees to provide one on one mentoring to those veterans that are returning to the workforce. They help them get gain, become gainfully employed, but they really help them through a lot of emotional stress. And to date, they have assisted over 3,000 returning veterans to our society and to our workforce. Phenomenal job. So John currently serves, he's not resting, he currently serves as Director of Academy Securities. And this is a financial services company not only majority owned by disabled post 9-11 veterans, but with the goal of, you know, hiring more and more veterans. And to date, um, well, I should also tell you how, they, how it got there. John used his Wall Street connections. You talk about a little arm twisting, Jay. He knew how to do it. And uh, really encouraged, and I use that broadly, many prominent executives to become investors and successfully foster Academy's growth. So today the business has over 80 employees, about half of them are vets, and it's a great, opportunity for us to celebrate the fact that uh, there are people out there that aren't necessarily always worried about what they were, but, but who they are today. So tonight, it is absolutely my distinct honor to introduce to you John H. Myers, a past Wagner College Board of Trustee Chair, a co-chair of many Wagner uh, campaigns, vice chair currently, and uh, received his doctorate degrees here. But the real, the real thing that we're recognizing him for is, is what I'll call a, a, an unwavering commitment and support of our nation's military veterans. And tonight, John, Brother John, Dr. John, please come forward.
Thank you, Fred, and, and thank you, everyone. Uh, it's with great honor that I accept this on behalf of all of our men and women from Wagner who have served over the years. A few of them are here tonight, some of them from my era. So much contribution to the college as well as their service to our country, Tom Moles, Greg Knapp. And then I was thinking about this driving up from Connecticut earlier. Two of our classmates, John, who are not here, who paid the ultimate sacrifice, Nikki Lear and Bobby Gall. And then Richard mentioned to me, Mr. Murphy, of your brother as well. So these are people who were here at Wagner like all of us and left to serve their country. And, and those that came back have continued to serve. And I think that's what my involvement with the organizations, and, and before I forget, Fred, it is such a special honor for you to deliver this for me. Fred was president of our fraternity and someone that I really looked up to when I was a young freshman. And I think you were, you were the first person that I really knew personally who went off to Vietnam. And uh, I think you created a legacy for some of us to follow, and I know that you're still involved as well in many of the organizations, Marine Corps Law Enforcement uh, Organization to begin with. But I think my involvement and Jody's involvement is is, is so been so gratifying for us because these young men and women today, and Angelo tells me that we've probably got about 20 of them that have graduated from Iraq who have recently, I mean graduated from Wagner who, who have served in Iraq or Afghanistan. So the tradition continues. These young men and women, I think, have the potential to be the next greatest generation. And working with them in the organizations that I've been so privileged to be associated with is really a reward in, it, in itself. So I don't have much more to say other than thank you. And for those of you out there in businesses, Really, hire a vet. You won't be disappointed. But thank you, thank you so much.